Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about AHRI number and equipment CFM. All right, so let's get into it. So to begin with, we had this selection already and we did the heat load calculations for this house. So in order to continue with manual D, we need to get ready and we need to make sure the equipment we selected is correct and everything is very good, all right? So what we did in the previous video was the following, but for this, I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm gonna show everyone a trick. The trick is, uh, the more space I have, the better, but that depends on anyone. So I have this compass in here that I'm not using and it's taking a lot of space. So if you wanna hide this compass or this con construction part, what you have to do is you gotta go to show or drawing or view in this case. And in view, under view, you have this last option that says default construction number bar. You just need to click and uncheck it and then you don't have that anymore. But if you if you don't have it, you go, you check it again, all right? But for this case, I'm just gonna uncheck it very quick. All right, so we have our housing here. Everything is ready for manual D and duct sizing. So I have my ducts right here. If I click in here, see, all my ducts are in there already ready to be used. But before that, I need to make sure that the design CFM is correct. Okay, we're gonna go here and let, we're gonna verify the equipments with the HRI number just to make it more uh, official and more formal, okay? So if, if I wanna go to the, uh, to the equipments, we have to go here to this icon. This icon is the equipment and in the equipment we have AC and furnace, right? So this is a very interesting part that you're gonna find out. For the split AC, which means the cooling CFM indicates 960 CFM, all right? So what is the heating CFM? The heating CFM is under furnace and you go under furnace, actually it's the same, 960 CFM. But a lot of contractors or a lot of engineers are gonna think about why the design CFM is equal to the heating CFM. In, in other words, why the cooling equals heating CFM because there is this makes the process easier. So this is the way uh, we can understand better. What is higher in this case is going to be the cooling CFM. So if we size the ducts based on the cooling CFM, then of course it's going to be able to withhold the total CFM of the based on the heating CFM, but because the heating CFM most likely most of the times are lower. So if you don't want to do that, then you can just uncheck it and you're going to find out the following. So if we uncheck it, let's find out. We are unchecking the heating equal cooling CFM. And then for cooling, of course, CAC is cooling, right? The heat, the, the cooling CFM is 960. But now we go to the gas furnace and it's 875. It's different. So this is the design for heating 875 and design for cooling CFM 960. So which one is bigger? The one that is bigger is the cooling CFM. So if I, si if I oversize my ducts a little bit more, it's going to work for cooling and therefore it's going to work for heating because we, only, we can only have one duct. We cannot design one duct system for cooling and then make another duct or other ducts independently for heating. That would be in a perfect world, but we, 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 we have spent in materials and everything else. So in this case, we only have to choose one CFM, which is in this case, we're taking into account the worst case scenario, which is the cooling CFM, the, the bigger of them, the, the highest. So in that case, that's why we're just doing C. When I check this heating equal cooling CFM, I have 960 and for gas furnace, the same. Okay, but now this is going to be interesting because once the contractor goes and then installs the system, he's gonna find this 960 CFM, but he's going to rely in the manufacturer's installation manual on, on the spec sheets. So that's what we're gonna, good, we're gonna do now. So let's go to the next step. So uh, as you can see in here, 
the AC has an AHRI number, okay? So the AHRI number is gonna let you know if this unit is approved, is if the match is approved under AHRI. The same thing for the gas furnace. In, in case you wanna make it more legal, in case there is like a lawsuit or something like, oh, they did they, this system is not approved or something, you can always rely on this document. So we're gonna go there and find how to get this furnace uh, HRI number. So this is the HRI number. I'm gonna control C and we're gonna rely on the internet. If we put this in Google, let's put in Google that number. Um, I'm gonna copy paste that number, but first of all, I'm gonna put HRI, there we go. So in under HRI, we're gonna put directory. There you go, HRI directory. Put in Google AHRR directory, just click on it and then bookmark it. If, book, if you bookmark it, it's gonna be easier, see? I bookmark it in the, under that. So in here it says enter AHRI certified reference number. You just, what I'm doing is just control C this number. Do you see in here gas furnace? There is a number. I'm just gonna control V and there we go. And it says, oh, production has stopped. So they are not uh, produce, producing this system anymore. But anyways, you can always select it. And then in under here, you're gonna click on the blue. And then, see, it's going to give you a AHRI, AHRI certificate. So in, under that certificate, you're gonna be able to officially say that this unit is legal and also you, this gives you the performances, the AFUE and everything else, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing for the AC unit. So for the AC unit, we're gonna have the following. Let's go for the AC and again, I have an AHRI number, control C, and then I'm gonna go here again to the my directory, control V, and again, it says, oh, the production has stopped. But however, you're gonna be able to see that this system is matched, okay? Because sometimes there are, sometimes as contractors, we just choose one system, which is the condenser, and we just put any coil that is outside. So for example, if this system is 2.5 ton unit, sometimes they, use, they put a 3.5 ton unit or a different tonnage. So, this is a combination that is approved by the AHRI. So if you wanna go get the document, you have the AHRI reference number, you click on it, and it's, you're gonna be able to download the document that establishes that this combination, this unit has that performance. See, we have this, you have the performance under the AHRI conditions, and they also have their standard, right, see? There we go. Okay, so that's the way you can obtain that document. Now, step number two, what we're gonna do is, now that we know that these documents are official, we're gonna go ahead and check the design CFM, okay? So for the equipment CFM, what we have to do is, are we gonna check on the AC? Where is our fan located? Where is our blower located? Is it in the AC or is it in the gas furnace? Okay, so the equipment, the fan, the blower is located in the gas furnace. Therefore, we're gonna look on these cut sheets. The cut sheets are pretty much the specifications of the unit. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have the model number, control C, and then we're gonna go again to the internet. Just, we're just gonna put control V, and then it, this is gonna tell me where to get this unit, see? There we go. It's just in Google. So under Google, I have the same model number. There you go, it's a GM, so I'm using Goodman in this case. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not doing any advertisements. I could use York. I could use Carrier. I could use Lennox. I could use Train, American Standard. It doesn't matter. The only reason I'm using Goodman is because I have access in here to, to, to the manuals, easy access to the manuals. For the example, it's very good. But when you're a contractor, if you have Carrier, you, you want to have access to the manuals, sometimes they give the permission to contractors, to dealers, or you have to request the manuals personally. So that's the only reason I'm using Goodman, nothing special, okay? So let's make sure that there, this is the model number. So this is a G, uh, GMES 
80 and 0603 bn okay so that's a gmes okay so gmes 8600 okay there you go it's the same so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna download these specifications where is it there we go there is specifications are right here installation manual and spec sheet so the spec sheet you click on it and then you're gonna be able to find the following in this case you find this Goodman. All right. So what are we trying to get? What, what so much? Because again, we are going to put in right soft the official CFM, the equipment CFM, the real design CFM. So you see 960. Let's see. Once, once you place, you are trying to install this system. Let's see what real CFM does this does have. Okay, so this is the system. These are the dimensions. See, okay. In here, below here are the blower. So right here. So let's go here. Uh, here we go. So we have heating airflow data right here. Heating airflow data. We don't need that. We have the circulation airflow data. We don't need that. The one CFM that's higher most of the cases, and that's why we put heating equals cooling, is the cooling CFM. So we need this data, cooling airflow data. Okay. So under cooling airflow data, you have the external static pressure right here, performance of the fan. See, we're gonna we have two options: 0.5, which is what we should do. But in order to give more flexibility, we're going to design based on 0.7. Okay, so see, instead of 0.5, we're, we're doing 0.7. Why? Because we're going to do this in manual D and I'm going to explain to you guys in the next video why I'm choosing 0.7. But you can always choose 0.5. Okay, but I'll, I'll show you later. So 0.7. And then my model number, is it like GM is a 8603A or B? Let's go check, double check. It's 603B. Okay, so if it's 603B, we're going to go here. All right, let's go, let's go here. So let's find the intersection under 0.7. See, staggered static pressure. You have this equipment. It's this column so what are your options your options are cfm 335 not really 1061 yes possibly 861 no 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 it's below this is higher and this is higher no so we're gonna put the closest that is to the design cfm that we have in right soft what is the design cfm right here for cooling is 960 of course, for the gas forest, it's going to be 960. So now we're going to find the next available. The closest to 960 greater than, 9, greater than 9, 960 is 1061. So technically, that's what happens. The technician is going to go there and he's going to click on the dip switches. He's going to put on, off, off in order to make it a 1061. Okay, there we go. So if it's in 1061, oh, and this star means that it's factory defaulted. So the factory will, will leave this unit in 1219. So in other words, since we did a heat load calculation, we need to put it in 1061. See? On, off, off. Okay, so 1061. Remember, 1061, that's the real CFM because we have the equipment. Okay, so 1061, what we're going to go here, go here, and then press F8, and then you're going to put 1061. And then you hit apply, and then, oh, let's not forget. When you put fan performance, you have to always, they are married. They are ma so the CFM of a fan is married with the static pressure. They, are, they don't go alone. They never get divorced. They always together forever and ever. Therefore, if you talk about CFM, you also have to talk about at what is uh, uh, static pressure. So that's going to be 0.7 static pressure. And then you hit apply. Perfection. Now we have DC apply. There we go. So now we, we go here. We have the official CFM and then gas furnace the same at 0.7 static pressure. Everything is ready for our manual D because 
uh, one last thing that we're going to be talking in the next video, okay, is going to be this uh, uh, blower, a static pressure blower for the entire house. See, the resistance. We need to fill out this data. And secondly, previously to make be making manually, we need to work on our duck preferences what is going to be our velocity of design we're not see that's gonna be for the next video so at least we have everything ready to go directly into duck sizing all right i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the like button that always helps a lot and share and subscribe okay uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you